Okay, I'm back working on the old Zenith here. Um, last we, uh, we were working on, I determined that I needed to remove the um, variable um, capacitor, variable condenser tuning unit, um, because we need to um, you know, put in new rubber grommets and get underneath and clean it out. Um, the tuning mechanism is attached to the face, this over here, it's attached to this face plate here. So if I were to take this all apart, um, this um, front dial and face will come with it. The problem is, um, is that the string cord, which, uh, attach, which uh, works with the dial and the, um, the tuning capacitor, is attached here to this knob on the chassis. So we would have to disconnect the, uh, the string here. And you know what? I don't want to do that. These things can be a pain to get back and, and to line. It's working fine. Um, I'd like to keep that together. So what I'd like to do instead is I took the protective um, cover that I made off of the, um, the radio. As you can see, it's just little felt pads I put on there to protect it as it went up against it. And uh, I had it tied together with two zips. So that was taken off. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually have to, the screws that will disconnect this faceplate from the tuner are actually behind this dial. And that's what I want to do. I want to leave this here and I just want to be able to take off this uh, variable capacitor. There are just a couple wires in the bottom we'll have to cut. Um, so to get to the screws, it's behind the faceplate. So we need to remove the dials. So I started working on this earlier and I got the, the, um, the white one, the, the main dial off. You can see the way it works, sort of the fine tuning with the red and the more coarse tuning with the white. Um, probably a good idea to get this off too because uh, as the tuning is going around, this, the red dial is rubbing against this. So this will give me um, an opportunity to sort of figure out a better way to seat this so that there's no rubbing as it goes around. So I um, loosened up the, it was kind of tricky. I was uh, a little nervous about it. Usually with the radios, you know, you can just uh, grab the dial and pull it off. This one was very tight and having the, the, the dual dial like that was a little bit different. But yeah, I did manage to get underneath there with the, um, with the very, very small flathead and uh, very, very gently um, sort of just kept working it and twisted and uh, did eventually pop off. Um, it's just friction holding on there. Let's see if I can get that off now. And uh, it's very scary doing this because it's just you know one wrong move and and uh, you can destroy one of these pointers and uh, and that's you're gonna feel like geez, you ruin the whole project until you get that fixed because this is sort of the face of the radio. This is really what you're looking at. Um, and if this doesn't look good, well, you're never gonna you're never gonna be happy with this radio. Um, so you gotta be very careful. So let me set this aside up here very gently for now. So now I've gotta get the red one off. Let's see if I can do that. Let's see if I can do it with just my, just my fingernails. Sometimes that works. And just sort of sh shaking it side to side, getting a little, a little movement on there. I think it's coming. Yeah, I, I, you know, I could get the um, the flat under there, but you know, I'd rather just try to use my my fingernails. Um, less likely that uh, will bend or mar, mar the paint. Okay, there we go. And there we have it. All right, so we put that aside for now. So let's see, how does this? faceplate come off. It's like a piece of plastic uh, printed on there. Looks like maybe they have some type of uh, something going on here. There's a little crack here. So I want to be careful. I don't want to um, make that any worse. So what is holding this in place? Not much. You know what was holding it in place was actually just this washer. Huh. So it was actually the pressure of the dials on the tuning um, knob uh, holding back this washer, which was holding on the plate. So um, not really loving that. Again, this is starting to bow out, so maybe we can improve that. 
So that's nice. This is all backlit in here. The um, the lights kind of going from the side, one here and one there, and this all gets lit. So nice chance to get this all cleaned up. Um, let me put this to the side somewhere. And uh, so these are the screws I need access to. Let's remove those. Looks like uh, I see one, two, and a, yeah, the third one here. Okay, and there's a little gasket here too. Okay. Let me put that aside as well. That gasket's actually in pretty good shape. Um, but yeah, it'd be nice to look at clean all that out. All right. Start working on these screws. Well, let me do this off camera and uh, I'll report back after I uh, have the screws removed. All right, so I have uh, two of the three screws removed. Um, these washers are not coming off. I'm, I'm sure they're not actually glued on to this pan here, but um, it's just been connected for so long they're not coming apart. So I'm going to let that be for now. Let's get the last one off. Let me, um, let me show you how this attaches here in the back. Oh, that just came right off. Great. There we go. I intended that to go a little more smoothly. <laughs> All right, so there's our dial pan. Uh, you can see where the lights go in. You can see after years the uh, darken from the heat of the lamp. So be nice. We'll get that all cleaned up. And so I'm going to put this back together um, for now, and this will give you an idea of what was going on behind. Um, we had these spacers, and oh, indeed, yes, the washer did come off. So we have the, the way it works is you've got the the uh, a small washer, the larger washer, the screw, the spacer, and that ties into the variable condenser. And um, I'm just going to put these back where they go just to uh, make it easier to remember for me to remember how, how everything went. A little bit of a hard time there. And let's see if we can get these other washers off here. Hmm. Stubborn. Wow. It's not going anywhere. Um, you know, I may elect just to keep those there. <laughs> no sense putting it, uh, any extra pressure on there. Hopefully those will stay together. All right, so I'll just put these back without the large washer. So I can see possibly a flaw in my, my logic because um, this uh, uh, variable capacitor, the tuner, is still actually attached to the string mechanism. Hmm. So well, at least I can see what's going on more clearly that if I do need to take off the string, I can um, restring it more easily. Um, let me see if there's a way that I can separate this, but I'm not seeing it offhand. Um, let me... Um, Go off camera a bit, take a look at this, and uh, I'll tell you what I figure out. All right, well, here's what I'm, I'm going to attempt to do. Um, I really, as I said, I don't want to uh, undo the strings um, and that spring mechanism. It's uh, it's fairly complex. Uh, one, two, three different wraps. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to um, uh, I'm going to tape off these strings and hold them in the position that they're at, um, trying to keep the um, the way the string is strung below intact as well. Uh, I'm going to loosen the, um, the, uh, the, the, the bolts from the variable capacitor and I'm going to sort of tilt it down in such a way that I can slip off the, um, the strings. Then hopefully when we put it back we'll be able to also get underneath it, uh, lift it, pick up those strings and then straighten and keep everything in place. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and um, bear with me on this. I'm going to make an attempt to tape off these strings, um, keeping them intact. Just trying to keep that original 
knot that we have. Well, not the knot so much, but the way that they're uh, strung. Okay. All right, it's just a little, a little electrical tape. Electrical tape. Um, it shows that it should come off easily. All right. So what we need to do now is we're going to flip it over. We're going to. The only two um, soldering connections I can see to the capacitor, unless I'm missing something, which I probably am, are here. So we're going to snip uh, this and this, and we'll just re solder those later. Um, or we could. We could use the desoldering tool. Let me, uh, let me get that warmed up, and uh, maybe we'll. We use the uh, desoldering tool. Maybe it will be um, give us a little more length that we need and keep this intact. Um, this is probably a hole here in the terminal um, instead of having to uh, loop the wire around. So let me let that heat up. Uh, in the meantime, why don't I start removing the bolts here that are holding the capacitor on? Okay, find the right size. That appears to be the correct size. What is that? That is a quarter inch. All right. Okay. Actually stuck in there. Yeah. So look at that. You can see how badly um, deteriorated the uh, the the bushing or the wash or whatever you want to call it has become. It's interesting. They kind of get uh, they get very hard and almost sort of have a kind of a crystallized look to them, like salt. nuts out of there before I go much further, before I forget it. Let's see. I'm just going to try to get it out with this pin. Oh boy, you're really in there, aren't you? Ah, there we go. Okay. Put those in here for safekeeping. And let's see, there's um, there's three. Why don't I leave that one connected and work on, uh, look at this guy. Right behind this um, electrolytic, which I replaced. I think we can get in there though. I'll show you that. It is right here. Let me get the light on it. Yeah, right in there. So we're gonna loosen that one up. Bear with me, I know this is probably as enjoyable as watching paint dry at this point. Well, if you're a nut like me, you love looking, watching these types of videos. I never seem to get sick of them. Okay. What are you going to do here? Lost our nut. Okay, we have that. Uh, let me see if I can get that washer. Can't see that, can you? Raise this up a little bit. There, a little better. Um, right in there is what we're trying to remove. Let's see if I can get underneath that with a screwdriver. Get some play on it. All right, that seemed to loosen it up. Sticky. You got a tight spot there with that electrolytic. Actually, it's kind of in the way. Huh. Probably should have done this before I replaced that. Yeah. Alright. 
there was enough um, wiggle room on the um, the Leeds electrolytic. I was able to just push it back. So here we have it. Um, so what we'll do is we'll um, find a replacement for this. This will all have to be cut away and shipped off, and then we'll rebuild it. And it uh, goes like this, the small washer, and then the nuts. Okay, we'll put that back in here for safekeeping. I was uh, watching another video recently. Somebody was repairing a similar radio from the 30s, and um, he had mentioned that, uh, well, he, he'd come across these this style of resistors, and he called them uh, dog bones. And uh, he had said, well, we're going to go ahead and replace all of those. And I was kind of um, surprised when he said that. Um, so I commented in the video and kind of had a little discussion. He wrote back that, yeah, a lot of these uh, dog bone style resistors, if that's indeed what these are, I believe they are, um, not really um, as good as the newer resistors that started to be used in the, uh, the 40s and the 50s, etc., um, so yeah, we're going to have to, uh, at some point, um, I thought we would just be replacing capacitors on this, but yeah, we'll go ahead. I'll do a video. We'll, uh, we'll check these resistors and see if they're in spec or not and replace as necessary. Okay. Let's see here. So we've got the, um, Heiko desolder warmed up. I'm going to, you know what? I've got it set on a lower water. Let's crank that up a little bit here. Um. Let's give that a sec to warm up. Uh, nothing too delicate here on these terminals, so we can go ahead and use a high heat. I won't do that. I'm just going to leave this last um, um, bolt uh, attached to the capacitor so it doesn't drop out until we're ready. Um, hmm. I see, interesting here, these ground points with some of bent terminals. I hope those aren't attached to that variable cap. Let's see if they are. If so that's going to make removing this more difficult. Uh, let's see, where is that? Over there. No, it doesn't seem to be. Yeah, I'm pretty sure once we get those uh, three bolts and the, uh, the solder lugs disconnected that we'll be able to slip that up. All right. So can you see that? We're going to desolder here and here. Let's see if the Heiko's warmed up enough. Give a little push on that, see if it comes out, not quite. I'm look under the magnifier, see how that looks. Okay, so yeah, I think that was a good approach. The um, desoldering tool worked well. Um, did need to sort of use the pliers to grab it and pull it out, this uh, heavy lead here. Uh, yes, I started using my fingers, but it got a little too hot. So yeah, see, so we left a nice um, hole there in the terminal. So that'll make it easier for reconnecting. All right, now this one has a, looks like a, a uh, variable capacitor attached at this point too, as well as that lug. Um, so it looks like it goes from this point and it feeds through um, this heavy duty uh, piece of connecting wire here is used also then too as sort of a terminal for this. Um, uh, I believe it's a looks like a variable uh, mica capacitor. So um, let's start just moving, removing some solder and see what we end up with, see how much we have to uh, remove. I think we'll have to remove some right here. All right, 
remove some of the solder. Now let's see if what happens if I wiggle. Yeah, so there's actually quite a bit of solder behind. Let me see if I can remove some of that without uh, burning either myself or one of the components. One thing about the desolder is you don't have as fine of a point to work with as you would with a uh, soldering iron. Yeah, that's taking a while to heat up, boy. All right, let's just let it sit there for a sec. There, ooh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, most of the solder was actually behind there. This side's a little trickier than the other, for sure. Let's focus on see if we can remove this um, the variable capacitor uh, first, and then we'll work on removing the lead from the um, variable. Actually, they're both variable capacitors. You know, the tuner is a variable cap capacitor, and uh, used for tuning. And this is also a variable capacitor, a micro mica style. If I'm wrong about that, please correct me in the comments, but I believe that's what we're dealing with here. Yeah, it doesn't want to go. I think, again, I think there's, for some reason, there's a lot of solder that's flowed underneath the, the lug here, which is uh, proving difficult to access. So I'll just see if I can just keep, keep the heat on it and see if I can suck it up from the top. get this eventually you know again I could just uh, cut these leads but I'm you know trying to salvage these terminals uh, and the holes and then uh, it's just much better if you can you know um, use uh, the existing holes and terminals you can get a much better connection when you resaw to everything of course it would be easier to just clip everything out but I'm trying to trying a different approach here over so I can get the um, try to get some of the solder on this side it is starting to break free uh, all right yeah that did the trick I'll put this aside for a second okay Let's see if I can gently lift this out of position here I think I may need to um, start removing the bottom one. I'm afraid to, well, let me see. I was gonna say, I'm afraid to bend this too much. I don't wanna damage it in any way, but maybe if I can, should have enough wiggle room there. Uh, there we go, okay. Again, be very gentle. I'm going to try to straighten this out so that when we do get the solder off there, we can push it through relatively easily. Okay, let's work on the next connection point. Just move this all out of the way very carefully. Give ourselves some room. Okay, that's loose. Now we just have to move it through. And again, you know, I could uh, be a lot easier for me to cut this uh, this lead a little bit but that's they left it long because they're using it as a 
as a, in a connection, like sort of another, this, the wire is actually becoming sort of a terminal strip for this um, component. Okay, freedom. So I uh, let's see how loose is this now. Okay, so we're gonna take off the last uh, grommet connection here and hold on to it so it doesn't drop out. And then as we're taking the, off the um, the uh, variable uh, capacitor um, or condenser as they called them in the day. Um, be mindful of the string here. I need to find my tool. Oh, I heard something drop earlier. That must have been our tool. There's our little mini socket. Okay. Here goes. Again, our nut is stuck in me. Ah, got it this time. Off you go. Okay. And let's see. Ah. Uh, yeah, it looks like these um, these heavy these heavy uh, ground braids do connect to the variable capacitor. So let's see what's the best way to deal with that. Um, let me see here. Okay, yeah, I see it now. Uh, well, I suppose we can attempt to um, uh, desolder this and see if the braid comes underneath. Uh, maybe it's just sort of, I um, can't imagine it's one piece connected. Uh, it's probably two pieces. Um, and most likely I'm going to have to uh, cut these, but let me see if I can, uh, what happens if I remove some of the solder. This is going to be tricky. That's a lot of, so a lot of solder there and uh, connected to the chassis too, acting as a heat sink. So it's gonna take an awful lot to heat that up, but um, let's give it a go. And again, we are on our, our highest setting on the Heiko. Show me what you got, Heiko. Damn, it's actually doing a pretty good job melting. Surprised actually how quickly it's uh, it did heat that up. It's gonna keep working our way around. from the other side. Hmm. I'm getting very close to disconnecting this electrolytic at this point. It's really getting in the way. But we did such a nice job attaching it. I hate to undo our fine work. I'm just going to wiggle the uh, that ground strap a little bit and see if we've made a dent. Uh, no. This part here seems like uh, raw metal. So it looks like the, the ground strap goes underneath this. Um, let me see if I can just remove a little more solder from that. Let's see what's going on. 
At this point, I'm not really seeing any solder melt as much heat as I put on it. You know, I had ordered some, some um, heat sink clips that would have been a good idea on this. There's not too much heat going up there, but the idea is just sort of um, clip it to any components you want to protect, sort of like I'm doing here. And, um, you know, the heat would uh, run up your little heat sink clip and protect your component. Uh, geez, I ordered that on Amazon a while ago. I haven't seen it. Of course, I could use a, um, an alligator clip, clip too. If that was getting hot, that's what I'd do, but it does, actually isn't too, too bad. All right. So again, I think this is a just a piece of metal at this point. I'm going to see if I can lift this up. It looks like there's a sort of a terminal that's folded over here. And um, just as almost as all this uh, ground strap is, is one piece of uh, band that they sort of slipped underneath and then soldered together. But I can't imagine. How would they have gotten the, um, the capacitor on that way? The, um, the tuning capacitor. Huh. Unless they, no, yeah, it doesn't make sense. It's got to be two pieces under there. Let's see. Yeah, I really can't loosen that. All right, instead of boring you to tears with this, let me uh, take a little break on the video. I'm going to work on this a little bit more and see. Um, I'll, tune, uh, I'll tune you back in when I've made some progress. Okay, I'm getting there, but my, uh, I think a little bit. A little bit clogged, so what I'm going to do is, again, we have this very sharp drill bit I showed you before. And I'm just going to clean that out a little bit. Get in there. I don't really want to do that over here. Let's tune that up. Yeah, so this, this you need to do some somewhat regular maintenance on the, on the uh, Heiko uh, desolder. Just to break up that um, the, the uh, solder as it goes through it, inevitably it starts building up a little bit in the nozzle, and it's very small holes, so it gets clogged somewhat, somewhat uh, frequently. So you know, if you are going to get one of these, be prepared to do a little bit of maintenance. So this is hot right now, so I need to be. Careful, probably more careful than I am being. This tool, I never seen it bad. I got this in one time and I, I had the hardest time get, I got it in all the way. It's supposed to be able to get in all the way. And I, I had a hell of a heck of a time trying to get it back on again. And yeah, this actually comes with the kit. Um, the bits do not, well, at least not the kit that I got. So I bought the, um, drill bit and I find this works pretty well but uh, given that I can't get this all the way in although I didn't seem to be able to do that from the beginning that may mean that um, I need to do some additional maintenance with this but I think for now that'll, that'll allow us to keep going ah look what I just did it's <laughs> I was just saying how careful you need to be with the disorder uh, and I, you, you start using it, you forget how hot it is, you use it like, well, at least I do. Maybe you don't. You play better at this than I am. But you start, you know, thinking of it as, like a, as another screwdriver or another, uh, you know, tool that you're using. And you just, you know, when you're done with the screwdriver, what do you do? You put it down. Well, I just did that with the desoldering iron. The more you use these things, the more you, um, I don't know, the more you take it for granted, and you're less cautious you are. And so I actually put it down. I can't believe it didn't do more damage. But... Uh, yeah, burned uh, on the extension cord of this radio. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is actually cord was in good shape and now I'm gonna have to replace it because I was a dummy. Yeah, okay, anyway, be careful folks.
been working and working at this. Uh, you know, had to be, took quite a bit of work, and uh, but it was worth it. Able to uh, detach all of these uh, ground straps using the, the uh, desoldering iron. Just straighten that, and uh, let's get it ready to um, drop back down. This one here may have um, restarted itself a little bit after it cooled off. Let me see. Let me just tap that with a little heat. Take that apart. Okay. Yes, a lot of components coming together here. Um, got these uh, ground lugs. Um, I'll tell you, even if I if I never get a uh, another subscriber to my channel, uh, these videos will come in handy just for me to review and look back at them. Um, um, the work that I've done putting these together. Usually, I, you know, I document it with, with photos and drawings, but the, the videos will be uh, will be nice to have. A little more time consuming to go through, but um, I tell you, you won't miss anything with the uh, with the video. All right. So um, I went ahead and I added this, uh, put the uh, this grommet and the um, the nut back on just to hold it in place as I was removing the grounds. So let's go ahead. I'm going to hold it from uh, hold the uh, tuning capacitor from below with my hands here, as such, and I'm going to remove the last thing holding it in place, which is that grommet and nut. And let's see. So at this point, I'm going to, as I'm holding, I'm going to flip it over because remember, we want to try to uh, undo that, um, release the spring mechanism from the uh, from the shaft uh, in a way that um, it stays relatively intact. So I was, I was kind of hoping we could um, sort of tilt it this way as I do that and loosen it. Uh, let me just confirm. Did I? remove everything holding this down. I think I did. I think I got it this time. So can we indeed remove those strings and keep them relatively intact? So far so good. Okay. I think we're good. Um, just need to get some of those ground lugs. Yes. Okay. There you have it. Uh, so this is nice. We can, um, you know, check this for any shorts now and uh, clean it off. Um, go from there. We can get underneath the chassis, clean that all out. Um, put some new grommets in there, and uh, yeah, it seemed to work pretty well. I'm gonna, you know, dress this up a little bit more and uh, really try to keep it in its proper position um, because again, I don't really want to get into restringing it. That can be some of the most frustrating thing about working on these radios. And I think I'll call it a night. It's getting late. Um, so that's it for now. And uh, next time we'll, uh, we'll work more on cleaning this out. Um, I think we, I think I forget what we had to do here if I replaced this electro, electrolytic or not. I think we did. I think we replaced it on the bottom with a substitute. Oh, and we were going to put the larger um, electrolytic in here and uh, do some testing on the resistors and, you know, maybe replace some of these. Um, these leads here uh, going to the grid caps uh, in a kind of rough position, uh, rough condition. Hmm. Then again, to do that, I would have to take apart. Now you can't see that can you? To take apart this uh, IF can, and I don't really want to do that either. So uh, hopefully our connections are good there. So we check that for shorts. Um, make sure we have good continuity there. All right, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. And by the way, folks, every workshop should have a fire extinguisher. Uh, I almost needed to use this one tonight. Take care.